They yeah. actually gained about three yards there. You're right. It's on the six-yard line. My bad. Another flag. Wide open receiver, though. It's going to be a hold. It's coming back. Can Collins track him down? Let's see. Yes, he can. Hello, football fans. Ryan here. We are going to be looking at a suite of plays, which I find fascinating. We need to start with a kickoff that begins the drive. The kick is sent inside the five-yard line, and I'm not going to call it a mistake because I don't want to be too hard on these kids. So I'm just going to call it an unfortunate incident. Teammates collide, and the returner who caught the ball falls down. This really sucks because this means his team, Bardstown, will start their drive at their own two-yard line. And this is dangerous territory. This could oh, yeah. very easily. You don't want to throw an interception here. Or get a safety. Yeah. Man, I love the scoreboard. It's nice and big and right next to the field. Maybe two right next to the field. Anywho, on first down, Bardstown throws an incomplete pass, making it second and ten. And again, we're on the three-yard line. This is important. Make sure you remember that fact. Before we move on, let's give it up to the broadcast team for this awesome replay. This is a great angle, and it's always fun to see incompletions multiple times. Again, we have second and ten on the three. The clock will start on the snap. The offense runs wide, and fortunately, they run camera sight, so we have an excellent view of the action. It appears number four on Bardstown is the guilty party. That player holds number 17 on the defense. The flag came from the line judge. Not much to discuss on the field and not much to discuss on this video. The white hat signals and the crew marches off the penalty. They enforce the foul from the 12 yard line. So they go half the distance from the 12 to the six. So now we have second and seven from the six yard line. Despite the foul, the offense actually gained three yards. I don't know if we learn anything from the broadcast replay, but we do get the cool slow motion shot of the flag bouncing off the turf. We were inbound, so the clock will start on the ready. And look, the scoreboard has it right. Man, I love this scoreboard. On the replay of second down, we have the play that started this video. A nice little halfback pass. I wanted to show the play again, if for no other reason than to highlight the hustle by both the receiver and the defender. The defender's effort is awesome. Number four can play on my team any day. Now, I know this play is coming back, but kudos to both these players for giving it their all. The touchdown saving tackle is important for clock purposes. Had the player scored, the game clock would have started on the snap. Since the player didn't score, the game clock will start on the ready. It's important for covering officials to communicate the result of this play to the white hat, as the white hat probably did not see the end of the play. And this crew does communicate this fact, as you'll soon see. As for the hold, it appears that once again number 17 on the defense proves difficult to block. He draws a holding foul for the second straight play. This hold is definitely at the point of attack. I don't know if it's the biggest hold football has ever seen, but it happened right in front of the line judge, so we'll trust it was righteous. The foul occurred behind the line of scrimmage, so it's enforced from the six-yard line, half the distance to the goal, so we're now second and ten from the three. Next, we have a false start on the offense. The flag came from the umpire. I think the culprit is this guard. Not to get too technical here or anything, I think this is an illegal shift and not a false start. The lineman looks like he's getting into his stance, not simulating action at the snap. Nonetheless, we have a foul on the offense. The five-yard penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal line. We are still at second down, but now the line to gain is 11 and a half yards away. But let's go with what the scoreboard says and call it second and 12. Bardstown runs the ball. It's a nice little run. It's definitely not one for the highlight reel, but get this. It gives Bardstown a first down. A first down. We've had five plays. I'm calling the false start a play and 25 yards worth of fouls, but because the goal line made all the penalty enforcement half the distance, that modest little run gives the offense a first down. That just blows my mind. Amazing. Had this drive started in the middle of the field, it would have been second and a mile, and the little modest run would have only made it third and a half a mile. Instead, we have a first down. Yes, now it's first and ten at the 14. 
On first down, we have another false start. I don't see a false start. Maybe it's on the player in motion. I don't know. I'm not saying there wasn't a false start. I'm just saying I don't see it. Regardless, the crew can finally march off the entire penalty. The foul will take the ball back to the nine, and we'll have first and 15. Next, we have a run, but there are no fouls. Kind of boring for us. But we do have this nugget from the announce team. You know, I just noticed something, Chris. It's not often that you, you don't see the white hat in the backfield. Great observation. I mean, I wonder where the white hat could be. It's a mystery. If you've missed having a foul called, don't worry, because we have another one. We have another false start. I think they call it on the snapper. It looks like he rocks back in his stance. We're at the nine, so the crew will enforce the penalty half the distance to the goal, which will take us to the four and a half. When we started this drive, there was five minutes and 34 seconds on the clock. Now there's about two minutes and 42 seconds, and the offense has run eight plays. Yes, I'm counting the false starts as plays. They've gained two total yards and picked up one first down. Good news, though. The white hat has been found. Yeah, you're right. He is in the backfield. Well, I'm glad that's solved. It's now second and long from the four and a half. Bardstown comes out in a unique formation. I'd probably go with something simple, but what do I know? I'm just a high school football official. The unique formation works great. For the defense, they corral the ball carrier in the end zone and make the tackle for a safety. I know there's not much in these plays to stretch our officiating muscles, but I find this sweep fascinating as it demonstrates the power of half the distance to the goal line penalty enforcement. But wait, there's a little bit more. The crew throws a flag on Bardstown for an unsportsmanlike conduct. It's fitting that the suite of plays ends on a foul. While the foul is unacceptable, it is excusable. I mean, this possession must have been very frustrating for the offense. Now I'm off to see if I can get one of those scoreboards. I think it'll fit in my backyard. Please put your thoughts, wisdom, and insights in the comments section below. If you got something out of this video, and we sure hope you did, please like and subscribe. If you're already a high school football official, have a great season. If you're not a high school football official, now is the perfect time to become one. Contact the Evergreen Football Officials Association and we'll help you make it happen. Until next time, we're the EFOA, making good officials better.